Let's check this out. Test, test. We should be live. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to another live, another live stream. Today, today is July 22nd, 2023, and we're in a comic book reading. Okay. We're going to read uh, a few pages from. Uh, uh, at least a couple of comic books uh, that we bought in the last um, couple of weeks, two to three weeks. We had a, two or three comic book hauls. Uh, one larger one, one smaller, but about the same price. Uh, so we have bought about, I don't know, about 55 bucks or something in the last couple of weeks. And we're going to have a read through two of them. Uh, read a few pages from two of them. And we might have time to take a look at a few pages from a third one that I picked out. Okay, just to let you know which ones they are while we wait for people to roll in. Oh my god, first man in! Nice! We're gonna read uh, Last of the Mohicans uh, from a Two Fisted Tales number 40. It's about a six page story. Uh, and we're gonna read, oh the god knows this. We're gonna read a few pages, the last few pages of Batman 243. First appearance of. Uh, the Lazarus Pit. Okay, we got Batman, Raz Al Ghul, and uh, a few other characters in there. Okay, uh, beautiful artwork, Neil Adams, right? And same with this one. Okay, same with this one. Okay. We're gonna look at Jack Davis. The artists in this are George Evans, John. Uh, John Severin, George uh, Evans, and Jack Kirby, and whatnot. EC people, EC people, right? Lark Park, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Hey, hey, hey. what's up, Chicho? Doing good, man. Renty, Renty, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, you growing cannabis this season? Indeed, indeed. We got our allotted four plants going. And um, if we get time, we'll just flip through. We can't flip through all of this because there's nudity in it and stuff, but uh, we're gonna possibly take a look at a few pages of Epic number 28. I think this is number 28. This is number 28. Uh, this is number 28 um, from 1985, I believe 1985, and it's got a few pages of Dune uh, comic, just an intro of Marvel Comics doing Dune. In 2010 but the, the dune is the one that uh, we might have a chance to take a look at we'll see we'll see okay epic illustrate is fantastic right uh, crack says epic that's very sweet yeah 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 this is sort of like a, a heavy metal magazine a lot of the beautiful artwork I mean this is let me take a look at the people that contributed to this you got John Byrne Terry Austin Bill Sig sin whiskey this is the dune guy i can, can never pronounce his name and dave sim and then we might take a look at the dave sim one too it's really cute it's really cute okay so uh amazing it's amazing really amazing really uh hypno 15 what's good all love these comic streams so chill so chill so chill especially after yesterday's four and a half epic I'm making plum jam <laughs> stream and I was at it all day just setting up the kitchen get everything ready and then afterwards I had to do a little bit of cleanup and I did a little bit of cleanup yesterday this morning as well um, so it's um, it takes a lot of effort to do those things and by the way um, during the live stream that we're doing last night the suite below us they were having a party and they were playing music and you, you can't you couldn't even tell what the music was right um, it was sort of muffled and stuff like this it was it was whatever they're doing a party it's all cool right um, I uploaded the video to sensor tube I haven't released it yet I'll release it in a week or so upload the video to sensor tube and it, we got copyright notice after for a four and a half hour stream that we did muffled music in the background no one can tell what it is sensor tubes uh, algorithms these technocrats picks up five songs and gives me copyright notices and says 
uh, you know, we're going to put ads in there. There's going to be revenue sharing, and these corporations are going to take some of the money. <laughs> Not that there's a lot of money, but they gave me a copyright on it, right? Uh, it's crazy. It's crazy. Uh, clown world. Clown world. Uh, Devi, Devi Rex. Whoa, I made a stream. Finally, finally, Devi. How are you doing? Hope you're doing well. Welcome to another live stream. J Pao, salutations. Hello, Chicho and all. Elagov jam stream almost killed me. <laughs> Chicho music mod is amazing. I want to I know crazy. <laughs> Hypno classic useless algorithms. Indeed. 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 What a clown show. They're they're basically uh signing their own uh, demise, right? Because people are just uploading live streaming on different free speech platforms non-technocratic i mean they're still uh tech companies and stuff but they're not clown show like what a joke <laughs> jpal wow i could only hear jam popping yeah it's crazy so basically what they're doing is they're saying us individuals own nothing right you will own nothing and be happy <laughs> what chicho rumble i know brother i know uh elder god we're, we're gonna uh, as soon as i maybe this week i'll get a chance to take a look at it maybe next week but in the next couple of weeks i'm gonna look into uh what i have to load onto my computer to be able to live stream and twitch doesn't do this to us by the way send like there's a couple of banned words on twitch which we stopped using one of them is the the french word for low iq <laughs> right? that we're just using low iq uh, so twitch has been okay with us uh, in terms of censorship and stuff but i want to just live stream everywhere so i'm going to look into the platform uh, what i need to load up to be able to live stream on uh, you know wishful thinking maybe but uh twitch rumble odyssey and kick at the same time um hopefully it won't take too much hopefully it won't take too much okay as far as the intro goes gang we're on patreon substack subscribe star and we're live streaming on twitch for now only okay kick is good kick is great i don't use it at all but i will i will start using it uh, so gang if you want to particip participate in these live streams uh, twitch is where you want to be at for those of you that are supporting this work on these platforms plus all the other platforms that we're active on gang thank you very much for the support it is in large part because of your support that we're able to do this and i continue to do this um, sharing what we love sharing what we think is important to share right name of the game that's what the internet was made for right sharing information without technocratic oligarchic censorship right banana boy salutations hope you're doing well hello russian vin russian vin zatva o3 zatva o3 salutations welcome to our live streams or live stream I hope you enjoy comic book readings. Classics. We're going to read some classics. We're going to read some classics. And we'll see how long we go, gang. Um, for sure, we do the two readings. And uh, we're going to get into it pretty fast. Because uh, I'm, I'm from Russia. Salutations. Uh, what are the words that I know in Russia? Uh, borscht. Uh, Tanapur. Tanapur is uh, Armenian. Uh, I'm Armenian, by the way, ancestry. Um, what's the other one? Thank you very much for the follow. Bem -ka 1999. Salute. Salute, salute, salute. Banana boy. Zatva. Thank you very much for the follow. And welcome to our, to our little corner of the net. Banana boy, I forgive the question, but now that I see you, I want to <laughs> hair on top of my head. I don't know. Vako Taco, thank you for the follow. J Pao, we're gonna read 
Last of the Mohicans, six-page story from Two Fisted Tales, uh, number 40. Okay, from 1955. Hello, sir. Hello, Ben. Hope you're doing well. We're going to read the last few pages of Batman 243 from 1972, I believe, 1972. Neil Adams artwork. And if we have time, we're going to look at uh, just a Dune uh, sort of teaser in Epic Illustrated number 28 from 1985. So we're covering, uh, you know, we're doing 1955, 1972, and 1985, which is cool, which is cool. So gang, should we get into the reading? Let me take these guys down. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, we'll load up this full live stream onto Sensor 2, Bitchu, Rumble, and Odyssey. Uh, no audio to SoundCloud. We do have much love from the UK. Thank you very much, Ben, for the love. Uh, we do have a SoundCloud page where we load audios uh, as podcasts, some audios. We'll get to more of it hopefully soon ish. Chat cutting, chat cutting. Yeah, I'm going to cut cut up to chat and notifications. Thank you, Alder God. And we're on Twitter, Reminds, VK Gab, Getter, and Substack Notes. And we do have a Gilded server gang. If you want to join our conversations, uh, join our little community, you're definitely welcome to join us on Gilded. Elder God, thank you for all the links. I'm going to take these guys down. But doing, but doing, but doing, but doing, but doing, and but doing. Okay. We're going to take a look at Two Fisted Tales first. Let me put these guys away. Oh yeah, let me take down the notifications and the chat's going down again. Boop. And I'm gonna switch up our video. Please don't join the Discord server. Please don't join the Discord server. Okay, gilded only. We've locked the Discord server. beautiful cover gang just uh, so we can take this little segment and load it onto the sensor tube um, for these readings I'm just gonna do a little intro to these things uh, gang welcome to another comic book reading we're doing live stream on twitch and we got a couple of books two or three books uh, picked out to read segments for one of them is this book right here two fisted tales number 40 from 1955 EC comics this comic book is um, one of the comics that we picked up in a recent haul comic book haul we bought about uh, I don't know probably around 55 comic books in the last couple of weeks so I took out three of them that uh, we can have a read through okay so when I got this book, I actually didn't know uh, this had a little short segment uh, of Last of the Mohicans. So when I picked it up, I flipped through it. And when I saw Last of the Mohicans, I was ecstatic about it. And definitely knew that we were going to do a comic book reading for this. Okay. As far as the grade for this comic book goes, uh, this is graded at good, very good, which is 3.0. So it's a low grade. Okay. It's from 1955, and it's got all the greats from EC Comics. Some of the, most of the greats from EC Comics. There's a lot of great artists and writers uh, from EC Comics uh, that you know define the comic book industry. Really, in this one, we got uh, George Evans, John Putman, John Severn, uh, Jack Davis, okay, and Ma Mary Severin, and th 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 there's a whole bunch of people that are. That did work for this okay so let's crack this open and just flip through it and what we'll do i'm just going to take the tape off of this because we don't want to snag this at all right take a look at the cover and then we'll flip through this Find last in the weekends. I personally would have graded this as better than uh, uh, good, very good. 
I would grade this as very good, very good plus, possibly. Uh, but we'll take a closer look at it. There's a little bit of uh, missing there. And my fingers getting, uh, the purple is uh, eating a lot of mulberries recently. George Evans cover. Right. Glad to add another EC book to my collection. And the back. Any three, any three of these complete new masterpieces of science fiction yours for only one dollar science fiction anthology omnibus of science fiction Boop. the caves of steel All right. nice and we ended up paying uh, 26.89 Canadian for this okay which comes out to around $20 US this thing costs and it's a really good price uh, for for this book at this grade okay proof of eight brands tested panic is best Imitation of mad, haha. <laughs> and Panic is uh, one of the titles that uh, EC Comics was putting out. Okay, take a look. The f let's read the fine print for this. Why not? I like reading the fine prints of these. So, Two Fisted Tales, December uh, 1954. It's 1954, 1955, Volume 1. Uh, number 40 published by monthly by fables publishing company incorporated at 225 Lafayette Street New York 12 new New York William M Gaines right William Gaines managing editor Harvey Kurtzman editor enter it as second class matter at the post office at what and new must be New York New York New York subscription eight issues for one dollar in the US elsewhere dollar 25 entire contest copyright in 1954 by fables publishing company incorporated uh, printed in USA unsolicited manuscripts will not be returned unless accompanied by stamp return envelope no similarities between any of the doop -boop characters names or persons appearing in this magazine uh, with any of those living or dead is intended and any such uh, similarity is purely coincidental right this is john severn that's signed right there right john severn Dying Bane. Oh. Okay. Yeah, this is, I would grade this so much higher than uh, good, very good. To me, this would be a uh, very good plus. Right. So that's like a five page story the end right two fisted tales number 40 ec comics right flaming coffins what's this squalus dogfish yes. 7.30 a.m. U.S. Submarine Squalus, Lieutenant Oliver F. Nakin, commanding, put out from Portsmouth, 
Navy Yard. Check this out. Rescue Chamber. Fifty-five dog fights. Look at this. Just plain being sh destroyed. Right. What is that sack being thrown at him? The gang got through. Now we'll get some help. What? Too late. Nice fight scene. Boo, 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 boo. That's a nice crash. Panel work. Jump as we go in Ames. It's soft, muddy, then get away fast. Now Ames, jump. Oh, he didn't jump, look at that. He got stuck. Oh, crap. Kablam. Ames, I'm caught, I'm caught. He's going to burn up. Got to get old Ames. Got to. Russell, Russell. She'll explode. Get you, get you out. Russell, you fool. Oh, he went to get him. Nice. He got him out. Oh, he saved him. Look at that. Look at that. He saved him. The artwork for this must be signed. Uh, George Evans. Oh, John, not George Evans. John Severn. No, no, George Evans. George Evans did the artwork for this. Beautiful artwork. Indeed, indeed. Three hundred and nineteen stamps. Yours for only twenty five cents. And this is the last of the Mohican story that we want to read. And this is artwork is Jack Davis. Look at this. Jack Davis. Nice. Nice. Gang, let's have a read through this. Okay. I was I was ecstatic to flip through this and find that it uh, it had less of the Mohicans in here. So I'm psyched for this. Okay. So this is the last of the Mohican story. Artwork is by Jack Davis, okay, and the script I believe is by Jack Davis as well. Sagamores, Mohicans, and Delaware. So, I believe the um, the script is Jack Davis as well, and this is Two Fisted Tales number forty from EC Comics from nineteen fifty five. Okay, 1954, 1955. Okay, it's the second last issue, I believe, of Two Fisted Tales. So let's have a read through this. And this is based on the book that came out in 1780 something, I believe. And the movie is absolutely amazing with Daniel Day Lewis. Last of the Mohicans. The 
just beautiful. Right? Look at that. What beautiful artwork. The following pictures have been excerpted from a story by James Finmore Cooper that took place during the French and Indian Wars. They concern a white scout called Hawkeye, a, Mo a Mohawk, Mohawkan chief called Ching Chingachgook. Chingachgook, his son, whoop. that's so done. I set this up properly. His son, Uncas, and their personal feud with the Huron Indian tribe. These six pages attempt only to give a tantalizing glimpse into that great classic the last of the mohicans okay. where are the blossoms of those summers fallen one by one so all my family departed each in his turn to the land of spirits i am on the hilltop and must go down into the valley and when uncas follows in my footsteps there will no longer will be any of the blood of the sagamores for my boy is the last of the mohicans and sagamores is mohican and Delawares and he's telling the story to Hawkeye the chief thus spoke the words of Chingach Gok tribal chief of the Remnani Mohicans Thus listened Hawkeye, fearless scout and hunter, friend of the Sagamore. Thus answering, Onkas, son of Chinjatguk, bravest of warriors, enemies to the Makwas. Onkas is here. Makwas, Huron. Do the Makwas dare to leave the print of their moccasins in these woods? I have been on their tra uh, trail and know that they number as many as the fingers of my two hands, but they lie hid like cowards, the son replies. The thieves are out lying for lying for scalps and plunder that bushy frenchman montcalm will send his spies into our very camp and he will know that road we travel this enough they shall be driven like deer from the bushes hawkeye let us eat tonight and show the Makwas that we are men tomorrow, says the chieftain. I am ready to do one 
as the other talk of the devil and he will come here is a pair of the biggest antlers I have seen this season now Uncas I bet my uh, charger three times full of powder against the foot wampum that I take him at winks the eye Hawkeye says Hawkeye will you fight the Maquas Hawkeye replies I must leave the buck to your arrow Uncas or we will kill a deer for them thieves the Inquas Iroquois to eat Unquas Iroquois Huron that's what it's referring to oh look at that in another moment the thwang of the cord was heard a white streak was seen glancing into the bushes the buck plunged from cover avoiding the horns of the infuriated animal Uncas darted to his side and passed his knife across the throat of the bounding deer supper there was done with Indian skill and it was a pretty sight to behold Hawkeye says though an arrow is a near shot and needs a knife to finish the work huh the chief's done saying be quiet Shh. by the Lord there is a drove of them if they come with in range of a bullet I will drop one though the whole six nations should be should be lurking within sound what do you hear Ching, chinga chukuk, chinga chukuk. for for to my ears the woods are dumb Hawkeye says and the chief says put his head on the ground see if you can hear them there is but there is but one deer and he is dead I hear the sound of feet the chieftain says perhaps the wolves have driven the buck to shelter and are following on his trail Hawkeye replies no the horses of white men are coming Hawkeye they are your brothers speak to them he says that will that will I and in English that the Kings need be ashamed to answer ha there goes something now I hear yes God keep them from the Iroquois the Hurons who comes who comes hither among the beasts and dangers of the wilderness Hawkeye asks believe believers in religion and friends to the law of the king men who have journeyed since the rising Sun in the shades of this forest without nourishment and are sadly tired of their wayfaring we are lost they reply couple of ladies with them with an Indian guide lost in the woods when the Sun is scorching the treetops and the water course are full when the moss on every be beach he sees will tell him in which quarter the North Star will shine at night the woods are full of deer paths which run to the 
streams well known to everybody what Indian is he Magua a Hur Huron Magua. Oh, and he darts. He's running like mad. Recognized by Hawkeye and his two companions, and sensing his plight failing, he plunged at a single bound into the thick thicket. The Huron had escaped to try trickery some other time. Though the small British party was saved from the Maquas that day, they journeyed on to Fort William Henry only to find Montcalm's troops. Montcalm's troops had begun invading the place. Hawkeye, knowing the land so well, was able to lead the party through the French lines unseen. The overwhelming forces of Montcalm took the fort with an honorable surrender the maquas being cheated of their british scalps attacked the british and before the french could help the maquas had taken captive the colonel's daughter look at the battle With the skill of Hawkeye, one daughter was saved, and later the Delaware uh, cousin, the Delaware, the Delaware cousins to the Mohicans, brought tri brought tribal war of Maqua and the Hurons. After a vicious fight, the Hurons were put to flight in defeat. Makwa raising a yell that spoke volumes of anger and disappointment darted away from the scene attended by his two only surviving friends. Uncas who had vainly sought him in the me melee bounded forward in, a pers in pursuit as if life to him possessed but a single object magua's magua's scalp hawkeye and the two british officers followed uncas hawkeye holding his fire for uncas desire for victory The Hurons leaped into a thicket and entered into the mouth of a cave that led up the mountain. For a moment, the race was believed to be lost when a white robe was seen fluttering in the dark. This Cora, 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 this the maiden, courage lady, we come, we come, Hawkeye yells. The knaves will pick us off at this distance. The knives will pick us off at this distance. Knaves, no, knaves can pick us off at this distance and see they hold the maiden so as to shield themselves.
at this moment the forms of all four were strongly drawn against an opening in the sky and they disappeared they got the girl with them the impetus young men were rewarded in encumbered with Korra the Hurons were losing ground in the race They're chasing up through the mountains stay dog of the wind dots a Delaware girl calls stay one dots horons again oh, look at that. I will go no further kill me if thou will De detestable hurons I will go no further she says oh. woman choose the wigman wigman or the knife or le subtle choose le subtle magus french title Mag magwas french title look at that just then a piercing cry was heard above them an uncas appeared leaping from a f uh, fearful height makwas ate she sheathed his own knife in the bosom of cora oh shite killed a girl Diverted by this interruption, Magma buried his weapon in the back of the Delaware. Oh. Uncas rose from the blow as a wounded panther and struck the murderer of Cora. Then, with a stern and steady look, he turned to Magua his failing strength uh, expended the latter seized the un unresisting delaware and passed his knife into his bosom many times Keeping his gaze on of scorn, Uncas fell dead at his feet. Magua issued a cry of triumph and made a desperate leap. Falling short of his mark, though his hands grasped a shrub, all he had to do was pull up for escape. The long rifle of Hawkeye was raised, pouring out its contents, dealing death to the cunning Magua. Thus came the burial of Uncas. Why weep that a chief has filled his time with honor? He was good. He was dutiful he was brave Man, manitou 
had need of such warrior and had called him away i am now a blazed pine in a cle clearing of the pale faces my race has gone i am alone the chieftain says no sagamore not alone the gifts of our colors may be different but the god placed us as to journey in the same path hawkeye replies then spoke Tamin Taminud, chief of the Delaware, to dis disperse the multitudes. It is enough. Go, children of the Leniap, Leniap, the Delaware tribe. The anger of the Manitou is not done. Why should Taminud stay? The pale faces are masters of the earth and the time of the red man red men has not yet come again my day has been too long in the morning i saw the sons of Una, unames happy and strong and yet before the night has come have i lived to see the last warrior of the ra of the wise race of the mohicans very cool very cool and this ending uh, if you've seen the movie i'm not going to give any too many spoilers it sort of plays out like this but different okay the last of the Mohicans movie with uh, Daniel Day Lewis is extremely powerful. One of, the, one of the most brilliant scenes in movie history, this part that they're describing here, and it plays out a little different. The same, but a little different. Okay. Highly recommend watching it. Highly recommend watching it. Beautiful, beautiful. Two Fisted Tales, number 40. Let's flip through the rest of this just to yesterday or day before actually I had a look at this story too. This looks amazing. Uh, but we'll save it for maybe another reading in our retirement. Right. What's the story on this one? The artist for this one is John Severn. Okay. This one's John Severn. And look at this. Just beautiful, eh? What's the intro to this? Let me get a good handle on this. Let's see the intro. The summer sun beats uneasily, uneasingly down upon a confederate patrol on the eastern bank of a small river beats mercilessly upon the little bridge which spans the river beats upon the squad of men pinned down to that bank by the keen eyes and swift rifle of sharpshooter so there's a sniper there right and this is uh just flipping through this a couple of days ago it goes back into the story i think of a childhood and it, it was just i didn't read it but i looked at the imagery and the panels and the panels tell a huge chunk of the story right the artwork beautiful right car burning oil engineers discovery stops it quick without a cent for mechanical repair 
save fifty dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars in repair bills at that time. That's a lot of dough. What is this they're pulling in there? Let's see. Whoop! Like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube. I wonder what that did to your car. <laughs> Send for my my free outfit and start a quick cash spare time shoe business. Become Al Bundy. But this guy's selling men's shoes. Cool. Very happy to have gotten this. Very happy to have gotten this and um yeah i would give this not good very good i would give this a very good plus fantastic and put the tape back on this okay nice awesome 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 All right now for our second reading Okay. For our second reading of this live stream, let's have a read through the last few pages of Batman number 243 from 1972. Okay. And in this this is the first appearance of the Lazarus pit and the artwork for this and the cover is Neil Adams and the story is Denny O'Neill okay and the inks by Dick Jar Giordano awesome like wow this is this is a for Batman for collection this is basically a must-have in your collection now I didn't have this and this is a low grade this is graded we'll crack this open this is graded at good it'd be good good minus okay well good because it's you know it's complete it doesn't have any chunks missing or anything it's not incomplete um, it has an extra staple I flipped through this you'll see I'll show you the staple I even thought about taking the staple out but it's okay we won't take it out okay so bought this graded at good i would give this good good minus right and this thing costs us 550 canadian which is a pretty good deal for this which comes out to around four dollars us okay only 20 cents this thing in high grade goes for very high grade goes for very much <laughs> okay uh, if, you, if you're looking at extremely high grade for this you're paying hundreds of dollars for it we're glad to have a a low grade and here's the staple that they put in right and it goes through here and it's not the original staple the original staples are here uh, let me see if I can open this up take a look that's the original staple right there right and then there's another staple uh, where is it right there okay. another staple there those are original staples I'm assuming the well yeah for sure basically the cover was detached so some Joe Blow came along and put that staple in right I thought about taking it off but it's okay we don't need to take it off we can still read the six pages we want to read for this. The sun's shining on our comic. Neil Adams artwork. Beautiful. His flow is absolutely amazing. Like really. Neil Adams has one of the best flows in comic books. Just the motion that he draws. Brilliant. 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 And keep in mind this is 1972 right 1972 
you're watching a fight to the death you're watching a fight to the death that Batman that the Batman doesn't dare win and this is uh, Batman's friend and I'll give you the quick little lowdown on this of what's going on uh, beautiful and this the logo of the Batman is really nice really nice the back cover dig these four new snap tight Mattel All right. so the story here is Batman let's see if we can fix this part oh there it is <laughs> for me if I can there we go Doop. we'll put that on top <laughs> for me if I can fix up these little things not fix up but just make it put it in the right place I end up trying to do it okay so the story in this is Batman is after Ra's al Ghul right and this is I don't know what part this is of how the story had progressed up to this point right I read uh, some of this some of the few pages just get the feel and I looked at it this morning and I picked the spot that we're gonna start reading but let's flip through this basically this is Batman's friend or their training partner and stuff and uh, there's a lot that's gone on since right and they're gonna be fighting to the death to a certain degree and one of the reasons is is because Batman needs his help to find Ra's al Ghul and Batman has saved his life so he owns you know Batman owns this guy's life but so has Ra's al Ghul has saved this guy's life so he's in conflict right now and he's saying we have to fight to the death and Batman you know they do their thing right so they do a little battle and Batman is able to overcome him right? And just beautiful like like phenomenal right here let's go through this slowly right. let's go through this slowly right give you guys the luck we're not gonna read it Batman cuts the uh, the cloth that's holding them together takes him down does a twist of the wrist once you get that you got the person down throws him boom jumps on him oh and he gets a kick to the face Look at that. Boom. Just beautiful. Right. And the guy's name is Ling. He's got it. Nothing I can do except wait. And that's very, what Batman does very well. grabs his wrist twists right if you can do that let's do this so I can focus right does 
does a twist. Twist back. Oh, he's lost it. See that? And turns the knife on him. And then he's able to beat him okay and we find out that actually this guy is this is a mask and that's robin and then batman takes the masks and puts it on and this guy's mad so there's a whole bunch of intricate stuff going on with the story right and basically batman's trying to find his way to raz al ghul's lair right and along the way, he picks up some companions. This is uh, Ra's al Ghul's daughter, Talia. I think it's Talia anyway, <laughs> right? And basically follows her. Doop, to Ra's al Ghul's. Matches Malone, crack. Thank you. Right? And picks up this this lady. This lady is funny. Okay. And long story short, there is now four of them that find their way to Raz al Ghul's lair. In the mountains okay and this is where we're gonna pick it up okay. we're gonna start reading it from here so take a look and there's all four of them there's Batman there's the girl there's that guy and that guy Because in a lot of comics, a lot of first appearances occur towards the end of the comic. And this is where we're at. We're reading the last few pages of Batman number 243 from 1972. Okay. She's a good woman, Batman thinks as Blaine is a good man even Ling has a kind of raw nobility I hate risking their lives for any lesser cause I wouldn't through the mountain pass but Ra's al Ghul is like the mountains and deserts he favors savage merciless he must be stopped this is undoubtedly the entrance to the demon's lair unguardedly says not likely it was guarded by those we defeated Batman trust kicking the door Ling has a point we may be standing near a trap that's why I am going first Batman says And alone right. crack he opens the door be careful someone yells he enters the chamber the 
Batman and this guy you see here this guy had jumped Batman earlier in the uh, beat Batman earlier in the in the book the Batman the guy says you never tire of gr gasping my name ah huh? Abu or Ubu a few hours ago you put your foot in my face I'm about to return the favor he says he's grabbing a wrench he's Talia's this guy's Talia's this Ubu's Talia's uh, uh, protector jumps into his face with both feet full force Bam. just takes him out in one hit he'll sleep the sleep of the fat ugly and stupid Batman things Batman behind you there's Talia coming behind them ah Elder Goss coming in Abu is Ra's al Ghul's uh, bodyguard The red-headed girl jumps Talia. It's daughter Talia. Takes her down. She was tiptoeing towards you. I'm betting her pretty head is loaded with pure nasty, she says. On the contrary, I mean my darling Batman. No harm, Talia says. I meant only to greet greet him Talia gives Batman a kiss your lips are warm as always and as always they chill me to the marrow Batman says I'd sooner be pecked by a rattlesnake the red-headed girl says I don't suppose you're willing to tell where your father is Batman is asking Talia gladly darling he is present she says to be precise his body is present his soul has departed there's Ra's al Ghul dead but is Ra's al Ghul ever dead Ra's al Ghul is dead she says or Batman asks Ra's al Ghul is dead quite dead you may test his condition if you wish she says I'll do that the guy steps up no question of it Batman he's lifeless as stone you don't seem sorry Talia Batman asks exclamation mark I am not she says he had a long eventful life several long lives she replies you want to take me to your silly police darling i shall be delighted to accompany you talia says as talia's silken voice fills the astonished silence her finger touches a hidden stud Doop. do 
the journey to civilization will be most enjoyable in your company Talia says holding on to Batman's arm I'll bet you'll get big kicks from jail too the red-headed girl says no our job is finished Batman replies any more chores Batman oh the guy's asking I read it in wrong order so redheaded girl I bet you you'll get big kicks from jail too the redheaded girl says and the, the guy in the green jacket says any more chores Batman and Batman replies no our job is finished but the panel at the bottom says not true Batman not true not true what is this madness for had you remained in the death chamber you would have seen the heavy slab bearing the still form of Ra's al Ghul sink into a pit. The sun is not letting us get a full image of it. Right. <laughs> I'm trying to get you the full image of this panel. We'll scan it. We'll scan it. Right? Oh, something's going on. Something's going on. What is that green thing? Right. You would hear a faint hiss and smell of thick, musty odor as bubbling liquid covers it. Covers it completely for a minute, two and then abruptly you would see the slab surface rise above the floor bearing a modern day Lazarus arisen from the dead look at him yeah and the Lazarus pit really makes people insane and Raz al Ghul is definitely a mad genius insane insane to the core A mirthless insane joy glittering in his eyes yeah <laughs> Look at that. The ruthless conflict between the demon and the Batman concludes in next issues. The demon lives again. Ha ha ha. So good, so good indeed indeed phenomenal phenomenal right phenomenal very happy to have this in my collection even at this low grade <laughs> at a great price right fantastic fantastic awesome awesome and with the sunlight it actually looks super cool right awesome 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 yeah, 
let's put this guy back oh there's a little bit of comic book comic book leftovers in here let's put it put it back in <laughs> somewhere preserve the paper of the comic book i think it's part of the cover see that it's part of the cover somewhere very nice very nice flip through okay as for the third book we're gonna flip through now before we do this should i try to put a barrier here i won't be able to to kill the light on the sun so it doesn't bother us it might be problematic for this is a magazine format so i won't get be able to get as close to uh, the camera but we'll flip through this we'll take a look uh, this is epic okay and the third book we're reading through we're gonna go through flip through of a comic book haul we did recently right it's one of uh, you know a handful not a handful but about 55 books 50 books that we picked up from a couple of hauls okay about 50 books that we picked up from a couple of hauls and uh, we'll have a take a look at mainly I wanted to take a look at this it's sort of a teaser for Dune comic book that uh, Marvel Comics was putting out. The artist being Bill Sinkwitzki, Sin right? But there's a Dave Sims story here that I read this morning. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. So um, we'll have a f read through that as well. And this book we picked up for a dollar, right? One dollar. Now, the people that graded this book that I picked it up from, they graded it at 7.5. And from first look, it looks like a 7.5, which is very fine minus. However, Sin Vin Itch, Sin Vin Itch, thank you very much, crack. Sin Kivich, Sin, Sin Kiv Itch, Sin Kivich, Bill Sin Kivich, Bill Sin Kivich now they graded this a 7.5 very fine minus we're live stream by the way and i'm reading the chat but it's a lower grade than that okay but for a dollar this is a fantastic buy very happy with it very happy with it okay the reason it's a lower grade is because it's got water damage on it you can see a little bit of the ripples there see the ripples okay that's like ripples there and unfortunately I can't just randomly flip through this because there's some nudity in this okay so let me hold on where'd that paper go Where's that paper I had a little marker here there it is okay there's a little marker here now this is the end of where we're going to read i can't show you this page because there's nudity here we're live streaming on on uh, twitch right but you can tell the water damage as well because there's a little bit of staining there ripples and a little bit of staining do you see the staining right there okay so i wouldn't grade this at as 7.5 uh very fine minus i would grade this as uh, probably a five or something I'm not sure where water staining takes you uh, some places some graders when something has water staining they really lower or uh, water damage they really lower the grade okay uh, to me it doesn't lower it that much but I'm willing to pay a lower price for it thank you very much right um, the first few pages are okay there shouldn't be any nudity here i just want to show you the table of contents here okay the table of contents i should let me get rid of the board so it'll be easier to hold on to all right 
so this is epic illustrated number 28 came out in february 1985 right it, and it's beautiful artwork gang uh, if you can and these books epic illustrated cheap 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 most of them are very cheap and there is um i believe 29 in the series i have a few of these already i don't know if i have this one or not um i don't have the whole series but you can pick these up fairly cheap on the down low okay on the down low okay so um well worth it well worth it especially if you like heavy metal magazine so take a look this has got the last galactic story by john byrne script and pencils by john byrne or byron i used to say byron now we say burn i guess uh terry austin inks we got cobalt 60 right by mark uh, Bodie and script by larry todd the atlantic fantasy fair portfolio the best of show cerebus and i think we're going to take a look at cerebus one by dave sim page 32 treasure hunt we got media view we got how to get ahead in tomorrow's army story by steve sable everlasting tag okay story and art by rick vedic you got dragon uh lander you got toad's wart uh film into comics that's the one we want to take a look at the dune in 2010 sort of a teaser at page 82 and then all's well we can't take a look at that one there's nudity in that one okay by zoran vanjak okay cover is by wm kaluta now let's go to page 32 32 and just have a look at the it's like four pages of Dave sim story with cerebus page 32 now i'm gonna have to i should have marked it uh i just gotta make sure there's no nudity on the page following it and no nudity there good stuff good stuff Okay, and this is Sergio Aragonis. Uh, grew, and when I went up, when I went to pick up the EC Comics, it was seven books, six books. It was a local buy that I did from a comic book seller. He actually had an original art piece that he just got. He was buying original art pieces by Sergio Aragonis. Okay, uh, and I took a look at it. It was like, oh snap! So this is Dave Sim just a short three pager i believe uh of cerebus right and if you've never read cerebus the artwork you want to read it Whoa. okay bam 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 a friendly reminder a friendly reminder Who's at the door? It's service knocking it down. Smash. Stand in the doorway. Comes up to whoever's there. Smat, smatity, crank, crunk, crunk, schmunk. Ba, 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 ba. He's got his hammer all bloody. Or what do you call it? That you smack things with?
Grope, grope. Looks like he either killed the guy or knocked him a silly. Grope, grope. Ching. Cha ching. Cha ching. Gets the money. Right? And turns around and says, next year, file early. He's a goddamn tax collector. <laughs> right? File early. Cerebus, the barbarian you love to hate. Very fun. I thought that was fun. I thought that was fun. Now, let's take a look at Dune. Let's take a look at, let me make sure this is, nope. Let's take a look at this. Okay. Film into comics, Dune and 2010, The Space Odyssey. special preview look at the Marvel Comics adaptation of this season's two most eagerly anticipated science fiction films. Right? That sting right there. Harkonnen. Right. Beautiful artwork by Bill Savinsky Savinsky The sun is not cooperating. A sand rider, look at that. The worms of Arrakis. Teaser. Dune is a trademark of Dino De Laurentiis Corporation, a li and licensed by Merchandising Corporation of America Incorporated. Copyright 1984. Dino De Laurentiis Corporation. All rights reserved. 2010 is copyright 1984. MGM UA Universal Artists Entertainment Corporation. A sand rider. Oh, better make sure this guy doesn't slip. Outside, with the shields down, Arakin is vulnerable to the Harkonnen ships carrying the Emperor's Sartukar Legion. To adapt such highly successful novels as Frank, Frank Herbert's Dune and Arthur C. Clarke's 2010 Space Odyssey, two filmmakers had to deal not only with satisfying the expectations of a previously established audience, but with discovering visual translations for the depth and scope allowed in a work of prose. To convert the films into comics Marvel's creative team faced similar problems they had to convey the experience and feel of each movie and at the same time create line art equivalent in a limited number of pages for several several hours of moving speaking visual images this involves writers editors and artists boiling the script down to key scenes and passages condensing and bridging dialogue and perhaps most important finding the right illustrative style to suit the given film 
Though the final adaptations will be printed in full color, we thought it might be interesting to demonstrate this sense of style by showing the art as it is originally done before color is added. My plan, the plan to crush the Atreides. I will have Arrakis back for myself. He who controls the spice controls the universe and we have controlled control of someone who is very close to the Duke Leto. This person, this traitor will be worth more to us than 10 legions of our of, uh, Sar Sardukar. I won't tell you who the traitor is or when will attack but the duke will die before these eyes and know it is baron valdemir harkonnen who orchestrated his doom As they explode everything in their path let's see if we can get the in the cause of Muadib forward death to the Harkonnens <laughs> Take a look. It was all so e so very easy. The traitor, your husband searched for in vain was Doctor Hugh. He was someone who trusted you trusted completely thus it was a simple matter for him to drug the food and drink of your you and your young son making your capture a simple matter and then he he shut down the force field generators in the castle opening it to attack i of course followed after the palace had been subdued and that brings us to the present goodbye jessica and goodbye to your sweet young son and there's jessica benny jesuit that bore a son more deep the sleeper must awaken located in the distant future light years away from our own world the environments of dune are solidly logically created by great, uh, greatly alien but greatly alien to what most of us know through convincing accumulation of detail in costumes and settings through carefully achieved special effects the film captures this uh, this this reinforcing it with this constant succession of images with the far fewer number of images a comics adaptation provides bill 
Sikwinski, Sikwin, Sikwitwitchski worked boldly and expression, expression, ex, uh, expressious, expressious thickly. Oof. Worked boldly and expressively, expressively building emotionally the movie's unique universe to portray the impact and intensity of what might be whole scenes and sequences. He employ, uh, employed deliberate exaggeration, reaching beyond what the actual makeup and effects might indicate and drawing upon an acute sense of design he fully utilized mass and negative space to suggest dune's incredible landscape which with the story's underlying sense of ecology share almost the same importance as the characters which move within them southeast over the shield wall that's where i told your sand master to concentrate his spice harvesting there's the mining facility below where there is spice and spice mining there are always worms, Paul. To protect their territory, vibrations attract them. Dr. Kynes, will, will we see a worm? Paul asks. Why do they come? So the conversation should be I should read these in order there is the mining facility below dr. Kynes will we see a worm where there is spice and spice mining there are always worms Paul why do they come Paul asks to protect to protect their territory vibrations attract them important to read these in order and then that's the last page teaser for dune and then we get into 2010 space odyssey beautiful artwork there's the monolith right What is it? One of the astronauts asks. Not even astronauts, space folk, I guess. Or astronauts. 200 kilometers. I am getting no radar echo. 190 kilometers. No, later. Different considerations enter into the stylistic approach to 2010, as with its predecessor, pre the predecessor, 2001. The story unfolds in a time which seems less far removed each moment. The science and technology are reasonable extensions of what already exists, and even much that doesn't doesn't is already established in our minds uh, from what we saw in the previous film all of this indicates a much more straightforward and literal interpretation there is a grand grand grander and cosmic significance in 2010 but they are built up carefully to make them all the more 
believable when they come in the layouts of the Joe uh, Barney and Larry Hama and in the elaborate finishes and accomplishments accomplished ink some Tom Palmer there is the constant consideration of realistic detail and logical progression to accompany and enhance the scenes designed to stir and create wonder this white thing doesn't fall over let's do this 2010 right. I've left 60 messages for Chris play a tape every week for him I will transmit the first day I am awakened please don't forget I couldn't forget she said beautiful artwork look at the line work on here and the inks look at that look at that more so than 2001 Human drama and emotions play a greater role in 2010. This gives Palmer's illustrative pen and brushwork further opportunity to make full play with lighting as well as with humanizing what might otherwise have become sterile photographic likeliness in the characters. As with the filmmakers, the creative teams on Dune in 2010 have sought to find their own way of successfully expressing the experience of one medium in the form forms and format of another defining it with their own individual styles and hopefully making it something that along with reflecting the original offers a unique enjoyment on its own this month along with being able to see the films you you'll have a chance to find just how well these eff efforts turned out as well the adaptation of dune is written by ralph machi art by bill sequinchki coloring by christy shield and lettering by joe rosen the adaptation of 2010 is written by j m uh, the Mattis layouts are by Joe Barney and Larry Hama finishes inks and coloring are by Tom Palmer and lettering by Rick Parker both projects are edited by Bob Budinsky and Jim Shooter is editor-in-chief Eclipse Eclipse Right. or not eclipse epic <laughs> epic <laughs> right fantastic fantastic uh, originally 250 Canadian US uh, 150 pounds UK and three dollars in Canada All right. beautiful 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 and the back in starstruck number one you'll meet Galatia 9, Bushia, the muscle, erotic and Kalf Bajar. Cool. Nice. Look at the artwork. Look at that. Good girls. That's very Dave Sim. 
but it's not Dave Sam. It's uh, by Lean, Leanne Lee and Michael W. Koluta. New from Epic Comics. Buy monthly on sale soon. Fantastic, fantastic. Let's take this out. And put this back. Again, gang, one dollar. Amazing. Bagged and boarded. Amazing. Include a little bit for shipping as well. Double the price. Make it two dollars. Right? If you buy it in a lot. If you buy it in a lot. And the three books that we read. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm gonna bring back my video. Okay, turn on chat turn on notifications fantastic fantastic the sleeper must waken the per saga aftra guidelines actor on strikes are prohibited from promotion of their upcoming pro oh yeah this is the you know, strike right given the starry nature of epic sequel uh, a press tour without uh, timothy uh, chalamat Z oh this is dune 2 a new co-stars like awesome blah, 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 blah. doesn't bode well for box office type hype oh wow well, that's okay crack great stuff eh great stuff great stuff fantastic game so good so good so good all all three of them amazing the beauty of comic books there's no other medium like it crack i think dune 2 got pushed to next year release does it oh well I watched the first one it was not bad not bad uh, I still have a fondness for the original Dune movie uh, with Lynch uh, but uh, this one was not bad I have you have to watch it back to back I think Dune 1 and 2 it's got to be a four or five hour epic marathon to get the full feel for it immerse yourself completely in it uh, fantastic game I'm very happy to have done this we're gonna do more we're gonna do more comic book readings slowly we're gonna start uh, doing less and less uh, politics and economics to a certain degree and we're gonna concentrate on what we love the most right not official as yet okay okay crack here's hoping you can uh, bind Batman or find Batman uh, 244 in low grade would love to see a read through okay I'll keep it in mind 244 so the next one wait a second 244 or two what's in oh yeah because it's the next one i wouldn't mind getting the whole story arc for this right i think you said uh 241 was the first appearance of talia i w i don't have that one in my collection no four no wait a second oh detective comics 411 detective comics 411 is the first appearance of uh, talia we'll see over time we're going to be at this for a while maybe we do this when we're 80 years old crack elder god everybody you'll be you'll be watching chicho read comic books in a raunchy voice why not that's what i plan to do that's what i plan to do the young pup gets a scene again young pup gets a scene again gang ha -ha, absolutely absolutely crack would love to would love to awesome gang thank you very much for being here i hope you enjoyed the stream yesterday was epic fantastic uh, lots of work the jam turned out great followed up with comic book readings phenomenal i'm gonna spend the next few days uploading some of the videos some segments i gotta cut up some of the politics stuff that we did um i might upload them in different sequence maybe i'll upload the cooking stream tomorrow and then uh cut up the uh the politics the two politics garden patio and the comic book halls we did yeah maybe that's what i'll do uh but uh, we'll do more live streams maybe towards the end of this week next weekend for sure so expect more live streams to be done you're definitely welcome to join us in our gilded server if you have any recommendations anything you want to see let us know we'll try to get it done 
Um, if you want to follow this work, I'm on Patreon, uh, Substack, Subscribe Store. You can follow the work there. Uh, we are live streaming on Twitch, hopefully soon to be on Rumble, Odyssey, and Kick as well. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see how fast I can roll that out. Uh, at some point, we're going to start doing edited videos again. I got the desktop. I'm going to try to. We bought a desktop, great price. Try to load that up with software, see if I can do some uh, long form editing uh, videos on there. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. We do announce these live streams 30 minutes an hour before we go live. Twitter Minds, VK Gab, Getter, and Substack Notes. We do have a SoundCloud page for podcast and comic book reading. We're going to load it up on our all four video sharing platforms uh, Sensor Tube, Bitchu, Rumble, and Odyssey. Aside from that, gang, I hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for being here. I miss uncensored downloads. Uh, in uncensored downloads, uh, what do you mean for our live streams or in general pirate bay is our friend is it not crack later all glad i was around to catch the stream Gra crack glad to have you man for comic book streams phenomenal you got some info for us and you have a passion for the stuff as uh, more so than me i think more so than me uh for the independence 100 percent. you know your stuff well gang i hope you have a fantastic rest of your weekend and i'll see you guys on these platforms and more bye everyone elder god thank you salute to the mods salute to the mods elder god peace everyone